Lord, hide your kids, hide your wife. This Rona done took over the doggone love and hip hop cast. Lord. Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love in Hip Hop Atlanta, y'all. This is season nine, episode four, Queen of Atlanta. Before we get into this review, as always, church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go and subscribe to my channel. What you waiting on, girl? Let me know you stop by, give me a thumbs up, and then make sure your notifications are turned on. I hope everybody is being safe out there. This damn Rona is like, this bitch is... You want to know who's to blame for Rona? Carol fucking Baskin. I'm just saying. Y'all like my lip gloss? This is by Chocolate Girl. I will leave the information down in the description box below. And you can use coupon code Auntie Momo to get 10% off. I love this lip gloss, y'all. I've been wearing this all doggone day. And I'm going to leave a link down where y'all get this shirt. It says classy with a side of hood. I don't feel like getting up, y'all, because I'm hot and I'm tired. And I'm ready to get into this doggone review. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review, because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it, y'all. Y'all, so the Rona done got everybody scared. Y'all know everybody got to be in the goddamn house. So Mimi said that the everybody, the whole cast, um, cast is filming from their house. Because they don't want to be out there in this bullshit. So they filming from each person's house with a little blurred out of their background. That's what Mimi said. Anyways, y'all. So it starts off with Mimi, Spice, and Shekinah. They all at this self-defense class, right? Now, Mimi wants to take a self-defense class because she wants to be ready. Because y'all remember last year, somebody broke into her garage and broke into her car and shot at her. So she want to take self-defense. Should the shit happen again? Mimi, if they have a gun, baby, you can't fight them out. I'm just saying, old schools taught us that. But at the same time, Mimi said that everybody, um, all of the females have all been through some sort of um, abuse as well. And so they're coming there so that they can, you know, learn some self-defense moves. Just feel good about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Feel like a, hey, God, like I can kick a nigga ass. Next thing you know, Carly walks in with Kiyomi. Now, Kiyomi is the ex-girlfriend of Bow Wow. Y'all remember when they got into that little mini Jay-Z and Solange thing in the elevator? It wasn't as good as Jay-Z and uh, Solange, but it was still kind of juicy or whatever. Now, Carly Red introduces her to the group. They actually met. They go to the same hairdresser now because y'all know Carly used to go to Sierra. She pissed off at Sierra right now. So, she's been going to this new um, hairdresser. So, child... She introduces her to the group, you know, she says that she does not want to be known as Bow Wow's ex, that she wants to, you know, be known as her own person, and so she got to meet Carly, and so, you know, she's just getting out there, and she's just meeting new people or whatever, right? Now, I don't know how they got on the subject of, of guys, but Kiyomi says that she met this new guy that she's talking to, and that, um, you know, she doesn't quite want to reveal what his name is just yet. Now, when she said that, I was like, oh, this bitch on some bullshit. She on some bullshit right now. It's messy. I can already doggone tell. Spice is like, I need to know who the nigga is because I can't have you date nobody that I, I can't even do no Jamaican. I'm not even trying to do it, y'all. I can't even do it. I can't do no Jamaican accent. It don't even sound right when I try to remember, try to do it. But she says she needs to know who the hell is that you doggone dating because as long as there ain't nobody, I'm goddamn gating it. Bitch, we good. But other than that, bitch, I got to goddamn know. See, y'all, we got Scrap Daly on with his fine ass and shooter. They in this barbershop. Now, the plan is that... um. Scrap wants Shooter and him to go into business to open up this barbershop. They want to make it like this classy barbershop where they got bitches and little shit walking around giving out shampoo and shit. They want it to be all beautiful, right? Now, Cheyenne comes in. Cheyenne is the sister that Scrap didn't know that he had. His ghetto twin sister, like they're the same age. He found out about her when he had found out about his dad. Bunch of doggone drama back. It's a whole backstory about that. Go look those the last season if you don't know. 
Anyways, she comes in and she's in real estate. Scrap asked her how much could a place like that, the barbershop that they were in, how much could something like that go for? She said about five grand. Scrap was like, okay, nigga ain't really got it like that, that. But I appreciate you looking out for me. Go see if you can find something for $1,500 to maybe twenty-five. You know what I'm saying? Chai, afterwards, Scrap and Cheyenne, no, not Scrap, Cheyenne and Shooter end up going outside. Bitch, they start kissing and rubbing and hugging and all that. I was like, what the fuck going on with this? Bitch, come to find out, Cheyenne say she been holding it, holding it down for two years for Shooter's ass. She say, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't mind holding you down, but when am I going to have to come out the shadows? Like, when are we going to go public with this? Because apparently, their relationship been on the low. Shooter say that he wants to keep it on the low for a couple of reasons right now. She wants to be out and about in public with it. I'm like, for two years? She think it's about Sierra because she asked him, like, what is she going to say when she finds out about us? Now, if you got to ask that, I'm like, okay, that's messy. I'm sorry, something in that just didn't sit right in my gut when I seen that. I was like, it's something messy behind that. Why would she have a problem if they together, if they ain't together, and Sierra was somebody else? I don't get that. Child, this next scene was stupid as hell. It was Akbar V at this damn listening party. You know Akbar calls herself the goddamn queen of Atlanta. The queen of Atlanta with no goddamn hit records. I ain't heard nothing from that girl but what she be doing on damn Instagram. Now, I ain't talking bad or down on her or nothing like that. But Akbar, she's so beautiful. But she talks so much shit. And she puts so many people down. And I do not like that about her. Then, Lil' Tion Akbar, y'all see the girl got a whole sex video out here of her like... Like performing fellatio and shit. I'm like, oh. But you got the nerve to to, to to talk down on other people and about what they do. And you out here. And it wasn't just male. She was doing females too. MC Shaky on Twitter. Y'all go check him out. He got all the tea. Anyways, Jock is there. Bambi is there. Tokyo Tony is there. And uh, I think Spice was there too. I can't remember. Anyways, Tokyo Tony says she wasn't actually there to support Akbar. She was there to find out why the hell every time she go online, Akbar V is on some messy shit with Light Skin Keisha. Because y'all know Light Skin Keisha and um, Tokyo Tony, they close like this. You know what I'm saying? Akbar V, once again, this bitch know I call myself the Queen of Atlanta. She call herself the Queen of Atlanta. It can only be one. So when you say that, that means that you must want to step up. Yeah, Just on some old dumb shit. Just real stupid. Here come Jock messy ass. Jock said that he's getting ready to do a radio interview with Light Skin Keisha. And he is inviting her to the doggone interview on some messy shit. Basically saying so that she can say what she want to say to you. You can say what you want to say to her. And y'all can squash it. And we can really see who the queen of Atlanta is, right? I'm like, y'all, y'all, y'all. And then here come Bambi wanting to give her two goddamn cents. Now, y'all know, I didn't give y'all no video on this last week. Once again, uh, it's work and doing this drive-through testing and then having to do homeschooling after work is very hard. Duh. It's very hard. And my husband works evenings till 2 o'clock in the morning. It's hard. So y'all to get over. Anyways, but what I want to say though, this is what I like about Bambi. How you got a problem with light skin Keisha because of her supposedly or your homegirl having an issue with her over some nigga. That's dumb. That is dumb to me. I don't care. I don't care. That's dumb as hell to me. And quite frankly, Bambi, you was at the party in the cabin in the doggone hot tub with Kirk and Benzino when you knew your homegirl was fucking with Kirk when Kirk had a goddamn pregnant wife named Rashida at home. So, girl, don't even go there. That's what I had to say about that because that pissed me off because I'm like, Bambi, shut up. Just shut the hell up. Child, then Akbar goes and does his dumbass freestyle about light skin Keisha. It was just very, very immature, very dumb. I was like, this is, ain't now one of you bitches the queen of Atlanta till I see some hits. Yeah, that's how I said it. 
Charlie, y'all already know Tokyo Tony had to go let her homegirl light skin Keisha know. They was at this spin cycle class, girl. Skin, uh, light skin, and her boyfriend was the only one that was working out. Girl, Tokyo went there to go look cute and post up and get that dog on bike. She wasn't finna get on that shit, but she did say she lost 37 pounds, look like a whole snack alley. You better go. Goddamn, I was calling this girl Tokyo Tony. I'm in Tokyo vanity. <laughs> y'all know what the hell I meant. Child, y'all already know Tokyo has to go let her know. Look here, this bitch Akbar B was talking shit about you. She did a whole freestyle about you. Um, look here. Like I said, this queen of Atlanta, sh shut up. Drop some hints. Then you talk about who's goddamn queen of Atlanta and, and, and all this other goddamn shit. That's just dumb. Y'all, so it's the night of scraps party. Jock and Carly Red over there um, flirting at the damn bar. I'm like, Jock, don't you fuck this up with Kendra. Kendra, the best thing happened to your goddamn funny looking ass. You better not fuck that up. Everybody's mixing and mingling. Have a good ass goddamn time. KK is there. Mama D is there. They chopping it up. KK is telling Mama D, you need to make up with CC. Mama D like, fuck that bitch. <laughs> fuck that bitch. She don't give a damn about CC. Cheyenne and Shooter sitting up there at the party all hugged up on each other. KK in the cut looking at shit or whatever, right? She can't wait to go be goddamn messy and say something to her ass, right? Jock is doing this little radio station thing over at Scrap's um, restaurant. Scrap is doing this thing where he's giving out free food, you know, giving back to the neighborhood. The name of his restaurant is Seafood and things. I'm like, oh, I bet they got some bomb ass crab legs and shit. Y'all know I love to have I me mean, some goddamn crab legs, child. KK end up showing up there just so she can chop it up, um, chop it up and be messy with Cheyenne. She says she seen the way her and Shooter was over there flirting with each other. The Scrap know that y'all sitting up there talking Cheyenne like, no, he don't know. Scrap done fuck with plenty of my homegirls before and it don't even matter. So I need you to keep your goddamn mouth shut. We trying to keep our shit on the low. Which once again, girl, why are you okay with being on low? Two euros? Two euros? That's a long ass goddamn time. And they trying to talk on the low and whisper, but they in the restaurant and it's awkward because you can see everybody clearly can hear their whole goddamn conversation. Y'all, some of the editing on this was was of the background scenery. It, it was just a goddamn mess. Girl, so Kiyomi and Shooter are filming this like sexy shower scene for her music video or whatever, right? Chai, after they do that, they come out and she like taking pictures or whatever. Come to find out, they fucking around. Cause Chai, they sitting up there talking and she's asking him about Sierra. Once again, asking about Sierra. And then once again, they having what I feel like should be a private conversation in front of everybody. They just sitting up there looking at their ass, having a whole damn conversation. It was just really fucking weird, really awkward. But y'all look. I can already see it's about to be a whole lot of goddamn drama with this. He says, a goddamn shooter says that he likes Kiyomi because Kiyomi lets him be him. Basically, she is okay with him being out here fucking around with other females, basically, as long as he brings the dick back to her. And he likes Kiyomi more than Cheyenne because Kiyomi lets him be him. Bitch, are you crazy? But at the same time, Kiyomi gonna say she has trust issues. Nigga, that's a red flag. You see how her and Bow Wow get down? Why you wanna go and involve yourself in some shit like that scrap? I'm just saying, I wouldn't goddamn do it. But it's gonna be some shit for that. And bitch, when I tell you I'm here for it, I'm ready for it, I will have my Moscato and I'm ready to give it to you. Next up, y'all, we got Bambi, Scrappy, E-Money, Lil Baby Breelin, Cece, which is Bambi's mama, right? They go to this soul food buffet. Ooh, y'all. That soul food in there look good as hell. Cece got some chitterlings. They have like some little rib tips. Greta got that food look good as hell. Next thing you know, Mama D walks in, dressed in all black like the omen, with a black hat on, shades, look like she was getting ready to go to a funeral, right? She got Ernest with her. Ernest already looking like, boy, this gonna be some goddamn bullshit right here. Child, she comes in, Cece tries to speak to Mama D. She's like, hey, Deb, hey, D. Of course, Mama D don't say shit to her. Bambi wants them to fucking talk and get along, but y'all know these hoes can't goddamn stand each other. Child, it's going good. Next thing you know, Mama D and Cece get to arguing. They 
they were ignorant. It was like granny's gone wild in there. It was dumb to tell. Child baby breathing over here screaming. He don't know what's going on with these two old ratchet hoes. They up here arguing. Baby, next thing you know, Mama D gets up behind this podium that was conveniently placed right behind her. She gets on the podium, says she wants to, to bury the devil out of CC. Child Mama D pulls out these damn obituaries that she had made with CC's face on them. Whole obituaries. I said, Mama D, if this ain't the lowest of the low shit that I have ever seen your ass do, Mama D was wrong as hell. Wrong as hell. I, obituaries? Really? You bitch, you, you wrong as hell. Girl, Scrappy was mad. Bambi was mad. They like, look here, if this is shit that you gonna do, like, Mama D, you took it way too goddamn far. I don't see how anybody can come back from that. I'm sorry. Bitch, you, would de you wish death on me so bad. You go as far as making obituaries? Fuck you. Fuck you and four motherfuckers that look like you. I don't want nothing to do with it. Y'all, we at Jock's radio station. Light skits Keisha is there. She's doing a little interview with Jock. Next thing you know, they end up bringing Akbar V on via um, video, right? Light skin Keisha instantly gets pissed because, of course, they're going back and forth over this whole Queen of Atlanta shit. Light skin Keisha, like, look here, I'm not here to do this shit. This shit is above me. I didn't come here for this shit. She don't want to ruin her whole reputation with like no drama going back and forth or whatever, right? Of course, that's all Akbar V needed to hear. She feel like the bitch is scared of her. That's why she done took off running. Child light skin Keisha gets mad. She gets her hat, her coat. She walks out and she leaves, right? Child's funny than the motherfucker. She comes back here. I need somebody to goddamn validate my parking, bitch. How you gonna get mad and walk off and realize your shit wasn't validated? Bitch, pay for it. You mad. You ain't gonna pay for that goddamn shit. Child, her and Jock end up, well, she ends up yelling at Jock because she like, nigga, how the fuck is you just gonna basically blindside me and have this female in my face like this? She mad as hell, y'all. She ends up saying to hell with love and hip hop, walks out and leaves, says she quits. We don't know if she gonna be back. Bitch gonna be back. She in a contract. She gonna be back, y'all. But look here. That was the end of the episode right there. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Elbow bump.